<coughs> Excuse me. Okay. Uh, as far as I know, this is going to be the last tutorial for this series. Um, and again, it's really not going to be too much that's going to be new, an actual new move in this. Um, it's really going to be a variation on a move we've already seen, which is the uh, Obiani. Maybe the Plum Flower. Uh, we'll get into that if, depending on how this side goes. So, um, and really all, it, all this is, is taking the Obiani Flourish and adding a reverse figure eight to it and then back. Which looks like that. Now, if you've learned the one handed um, the finger roll to the reverse grip, that's what I'm doing here. That's all I'm doing here. Okay, so if you've learned that, actually, then this is going to be very easy for you. If you haven't learned that, then this will probably be a nightmare. So all I'm doing here is the obi Annie flourish. And then as I bring the saber back to my back side, as if I'm going to continue the move, I do that finger roll into the reverse and then just doing some figure eights. And then I switch it back and then come back into the OBM. Which looks like that. Uh, you can also... <laughs> um, after you switch into that reverse and do the figure eights, when you come back to the standard grip, you can go straight into the Obiani instead of coming into the figure eight first. like that. Uh, it feels a little bit more awkward because you're having to go from a finger roll right into that. It is possible, uh, but it just feels more natural, at least for me, as that when I come back into that standard grip, I go back to the front first before going into that OB ante. But again, you can do it either way. Um, again, you can apply this to the plum flower. So you have the plum flower. And then if you want to add some variation to it, you can go into that reverse, do some figure eights, and then go back into the plum flower. Like that. That just gives you a little variation with that move. Um, Again, it's, I wouldn't say it's very useful for a combative situation. I mean, the reverse grip in, in itself, uh, there's been a lot of discussion whether that's actually a useful grip at all. But again, if you want to use it, it's a very good surprise technique. You know, you can be doing your obi annies and then switch into a reverse grip. You know, do some techniques with that and then switch back to a standard grip. Now, it is possible to do a reverse grip plum flower. Um, it's one I haven't practiced too much because it's uh, quite awkward, to say the least. But the way to do it, if you ever want to practice it, is that when you do that finger roll into the reverse grip here, at first, you want to get up some momentum with a couple figure eights. And then you're doing it basically the same way as the standard grip. As you come around, you're bringing the saber vertical. And then you're pretty much going into an upward figure eight from there. So, vertical figure eight. Again, it's very awkward, especially with a lighter hilt, because it tends to want to come more towards you. So, 
I mean, this move does lend itself more to injury, I would say. I mean, it is possible, but you kind of have to put in the work for it. Now, to finish that, from the reverse grip, coming down and vertical, and then into the upward figure right here. Let's see if I can do this from this vantage point. So, as I'm doing the obianis here, finger roll to reverse. Then you want to do some figure eights to get momentum when you're ready to do the, this side. Bring it vertical, and then up. You're immediately going towards your back. Okay, so vertical, towards the back, and towards the front. So you're basically doing an upward figure eight in a reverse grip. It's very awkward. It, it just feels weird, especially. Um, but when you're doing it, you know, I wouldn't spend a lot of time doing upward figure eights. I would just, you know, do one set and then bring it back. And to bring it back, as you come to the front, again, you're bringing it vertical. Vertical, and then back into the figure eights, which you can then switch back with the finger roll to the standard grip. <coughs> so, all together, you can do the plum flower first. You can add the little variation with the uh, reverse grip, and then come back into a standard plum flower. Or you can do a reverse figure eight. And a reverse plum flower. And then back into the standard grip. It's a little bit faster. Regular plum flower. Variation. And then the reverse plum flower. like that. Again, getting those upward figure eights may take you some time if you actually want to learn this move. It's very awkward. It, it kind of takes some avoidance <laughs> to keep from hitting yourself on this side. Um, so, um, again, it just takes some more coordination. Uh, it just takes practice to get that. It's only for it's only for show. This there's nothing useful about this at all. Um, it's just as a flashy technique, basically. That's all this move is. You know, even the plum flower. Again, happy Fourth of July, by the way. But uh, even the plum flower really is just mainly for show. I mean, you're not really going to use this in a combative situation. At least I wouldn't. So the plum flower, then the variation. And then the reverse. Okay. Only for show, nothing useful about the reverse part of this. But if you want to practice it, it'll give you, you know, something else to work on um, with your saber. Uh, it's just for fun. It's just something I learned to add to my repertoire of moves. So that's really all that is. Again, practice it slow, especially this, the uh, upward figure eights and the reverse grip. Otherwise, you will hit yourself. And if you have a heavy grade blade, that is not going to feel comfortable at all, I can tell you. So, um, I think for now that's going to be the last video for the single saber series. Uh, next video, next um, time I upload, it'll probably be some dual saber techniques. 
And that should be a little bit longer series because there's a lot more intricate moves you can do with two sabers as opposed to one. So, um, yeah, for now, thank you for watching this series. Uh, it's been fun to do. And if you want to progress to dual sabers, um, I would suggest taking every move I've shown you in this series and learning it on each hand. Okay, as, as slowly and as coordinated as you can get it. Because to do dual blade sabers, you kind of have to be proficient with both hands to keep the sabers working as one unit instead of two separate weapons. Okay, so thank you again for watching. Um, I will see you in the dual bladed series if you choose to watch that. Take care. Happy Fourth of July.